Okay, so the last thing that we wanted to cover. So FIFA Ultimate Teams, their new preview packs actually boosted loot box sales. This came from Andrew Wilson. So overall, you've got to hand it to Miska. He was right. The latest EA financial call. So he called it out and basically said, we saw an increase in engagement. We saw a higher rate of conversion of our spenders. So if you remember the design, they offered players the ability to preview their first purchase pack each day. And after previewing, there was a daily cooldown preventing players from spamming. My inclination is that this would have this would decrease revenue from the boxes, likely in, say, single digits, since it retained the spend depth, but would turn off some players who'd see their preview and then refuse to pay for the pack. But this overall doesn't seem to be the case. So one thing is just looking past the headline here. This was happening near the end of a FIFA season, which typically has spikes of revenue. So it's unclear what we're really comparing to. Like conversion of the baseline a week before, conversion season over season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that is the problem, right? They have a huge right. promo during this time. So we don't know whether or not they're just, they're picking out stats just to, exactly. just to prove themselves. So go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. So like keeping in mind that like Andrew Wilson is incentivized to make it look good, to make sure that people don't feel like they're rocking the boat too much with these types of features. And like without daily revenue data, which really doesn't exist on console, I don't think this is really an open and shut case. So it's interesting that he announced it. Maybe maybe it doesn't, didn't have as much impact, but I think it's really hard to really say exactly what impact without actually knowing on the ground numbers. But yeah, calling BS on finance calls isn't really what I want to talk about here. I think there's just a greater trend here. Like there was some recent news as well. Second Life is removing loot boxes. FIFA obviously experimenting. Australia is now proposing a loot box ban. As well as UK, there's some age-appropriate design code specifically targeting loot boxes for children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think overall loot box design is getting more and more scrutiny. There's a chance that eventually they could get removed. And I think on a lot of designers' minds is what do we do without loot boxes? Like loot boxes obviously are a very dominant form of monetization on mobile. And what's great about it is that it drives massive economy depth and spend depth. For each piece of content you add, you exponentially add more depth to your system instead of say a direct purchase system, which is linear. You add a new content, players purchase it if they care about it, and that's it. So is there a way to recreate this type of exponential depth with a non-loot box system? And I think it typically breaks down, and like any monetization system in a free-to-play game can be broken down to this, that all monetization systems are effectively offering a trade-off of, of time, luck, or skill, or pay, right? So timers, real-time, loot boxes, luck, boosters, skill and luck, power and stats and games is basically game time and skill. So when you take loot boxes out, there are kind of a few strategies. I think you can shift towards more time, skill, or cost exponentially higher. So higher prices for the assets to directly purchase. So instead of a $1 loot box, you have $100 per character. You can also increase time required to craft. So you have you know free-to-play 2010 all over again. Or you can be, you know, shifting to battle pass economies and trying to actually make them into a monetization feature. But then you're going to start seeing battle passes that take a lot longer to earn through or a lot more skill required to earn each of those items. It's just increasing the costs, increasing the friction. Like the strategy I think most people will try is try to dress up the luck element that regulators won't notice. So that's really what FIFA is experimenting with, what Fortnite experiment with, with previews of packs. Diablo Immortals is trying this with Rifts. Warframe has been doing this for a while. Kind of buy entry to a mission that has the random rewards that you want. So technically you're buying a ticket, you're not buying the reward, but it's just one or two stages removed. Like taking this further, I think the likely scenario is that a whole bunch of developers are going to build out ticket systems where there's tickets to zones, which have randomizations of key rewards, and those drop rates are higher or give you guaranteed drops. You pay a ticket, you get an entrance, and or you say placement in an event of a leaderboard, and those rewards or currencies are for the things that you want. This can then be kind of a mix of skill, luck, and time, and actually turns into say a skill-based mini game instead of a loot box to try to get away from this i think additionally to compensate for no new dude that new feels like there's a lot of friction there dude yeah i know but <laughs> but this is kind of where you're you're going to if you're trying to dress up the loot the luck element. right right so it is more friction than just opening and spamming a whole bunch of loot boxes but if you want the same type of thing what you could say is okay 
there's one ticket that gives you 20 loot boxes or 20 random rewards in the area versus one that's only one. So you can kind of batch purchase to kind of reduce some of that continual purchase friction. Anyways, to compensate for loot boxes, keep it at exponential depth. I think what's ending, what's going to end up happening is that it's just going to actually put more strain on developers to produce more valuable live content. So I think there'll be more pressure on launching even more characters, even more gear pieces than before. And then each of those price for that content will be higher. And ultimately assets will be, have to be even more valuable than they have been before uh, loot boxes. So all systems and game modes that incentivize collection will have to be even stronger than games today offer. And I think like, Pointing to games like Warframe, and I continually use that example, but I think they do a pretty good job. Warframe is a direct purchase economy that functions pretty well without loot boxes for their main assets being the characters, the Warframes, and the gear, the weapons. So they can only do that because they have so much system depth in promoting that collection of Warframes and weapons. So... Yeah, I think loot boxes being taken away it will be a big revenue drop for the industry because I don't think a lot of developers will be prepared for it. And I think we can dress up loot boxes. There might be some ways to kind of keep some of the benefits, but I think ultimately luck taken out of the monetization picture, it pushes devs to be more able to design systems that design that support far more assets, drive stronger collection mechanics. So I think the underlying learnings of mobile CCRPG design are actually poised to go stronger, not weaker, as loot boxes get removed. So I think that's really what the future is going to be taking. Like there'll be revenue drop because developers don't fully understand it, but the kind of tenets of CCRPG design are only going to be going stronger. What do you guys think? I don't know. I, I still kind of think that ultimately it'll be about protecting kids from loot boxes which actually I think is, is smart. I, I, I don't think they're going to remove loot boxes altogether because I, I think it's just embedded with so many different things. Like Roblox would like literally lose half their revenue, right? But, and they target kids. That's what I'm a little bit worried about Roblox as, as a longer term issue for them because I think loot boxes is relatively significant for them, but I'm not sure how much. But um, anyway, so I think if they allevi- eliminate the, the kids games that have loot boxes age gating or removing that feature or maybe this preview thing will get people off their backs i don't know yeah i don't know i just think that like it's just too embedded it would it would create huge havoc within this with all the games that are using it mm. and then and then i the, the, the thing i think it's it, it is a slippery slope to some degree is like how much of this monetization strategies out there are similar to loot box in terms of design in terms of of how it influences behavior, you know? We've talked about this before many times, like, are they just gonna go after all free-to-play modernization? You know, are they gonna end with loot boxes? You know, I don't know. I, I think I, I've missed Adam on this podcast. Like that was, that was a fantastic, fantastic uh, summary of, of, of everything. I, I have nothing to add. I when, when I called it out and I said, this would probably increase engagement as well as monetization, it was just me absolutely loving FIFA and I've been playing Ultimate Team a lot and I was just thinking to myself as a player would I check always what's in the what's in the in the in the packet and would I buy if I would see something cool I said yes and yes and that would get me just into the purchase flow all the time constantly coming back constantly looking and and probably will get me buying more so smart move for me yeah we'll, we'll see what happens at scale if, no. they, if they actually implement this thing for the next FIFA. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I want to see the impact. I'd, I'd love to see how people kind of work this, especially as things like age gating come in and you start seeing, you know, people saying, okay, well, if you're under the age gate, what game is there left, right? If there's no way to buy loot boxes, do they just not offer any monetization there or are there other, other mechanics they go to?